living in the States, you're living in one of the most brutal societies in the history of the world. A country who inherited the genocide of the Native American peoples. A country which participated in chattel slavery. The only country in the world to use and drop an atomic bomb on another country. The, the country which, which murdered and enslaved millions in Southeast Asia uh, as a result of the Vietnam War. And we drew from, from the people who resisted. We were inspired because we feel that, that any society or any government or any system that is set up solely to profit a wealthy class uh, while the majority of the people toil and suffer and sell their labor power so long as that system's only true motive is, is profit interest and not the maintenance and betterment of the population uh, to meeting human needs then that society should not stand it should be challenged and questioned and overthrown waking up to the long legacy of brutality of American history and subjugating the world's population has been something we wanted to challenge through music. I was drawn to music really, really early in my life. I think initially I was listening to, like, Hendrix. Uh, yeah, I was listening to uh, a little bit of jazz. I was listening to Charlie Parker at a very young age, and I, and I, I was just drawn to it. I started playing guitar at first. It was my first instrument I played. I think it was just an instinctual thing. You know, there was a... I, I grew up in a very... Uh, you know, I was, I was a Mexicano in a part of the country where I was the exception to the rule because most Mexicanos in Orange County were there because they had a broom or a hammer in their hand or were picking baskets of strawberries. There was a, a, a deep sense of, of uh, frustration and alienation I experienced growing up in a, in a very conservative community, very racist very conservative community. That's what initially uh, attracted me to punk music and punk culture. The people that I were listening to at the time, you know, really moved me. People like uh, Iggy Pop, and the Stooges, you know, the MC5, Public Enemy, Run DMC. We felt that those, those were two mediums which, you know, instinctually moved us and we felt could provide the most compelling uh, backdrop for our ideas. I grew up break dancing. I grew up playing punk rock music. I grew up listening to it. It, it spoke to me in a way that no other music until that point could speak to me. It, it kind of happened. It was spontaneous. It wasn't a lot of thought put into it, you know? We, we were very uh, excited about the idea of playing hip hop with live instrumentation and fusing the music that we loved so much that we felt uh, drawn to. It was very spontaneous. There's no way to say exactly how the sounds came together uh, or why. <laughs> empire, I mean, is, is something that the States has, uh, has become. The United States is an empire. It is a, one of the most powerful forces within the global economy. The title actually came from a speech given by Ronald Reagan in the 1980s as he addressed the Soviet Union as the evil empire. And if you look at the atrocities committed by the U.S. in the latter half of the 20th century, we figured that name or that tag could easily, easily be used to describe the U.S. And so that's why we used it. Uh, uh. The image of the second record was, is um, a little more ironic, you know, <laughs> considering, you know, if you, if you look very closely at the boy's face, to us he symbolizes um, the, the power structure in the U.S. If you look at him, he's smiling as if he's in control. But if you look deeper into his face, you see that he's afraid because he knows what's coming. He knows that poor people in the U.S. are not going to continue to suffer in the way that they suffer without taking action against them. That picture uh, captured that very well.